and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. On our show, we're going to talk a little bit about one nutrient that, depending on where you're at in the country, you may have too much of this, you may have not enough, or it may be a nutrient that you never really think about because your soils are perfectly balanced. We're going to be talking about magnesium. We're standing out in a cornfield today in part because we want to talk a little about plant health in corn. Can you actually use a fungicide product and get better plant health in corn overall? Or what what else can you do to improve overall plant condition? So we're going to talk about that just a little bit today. Well, standing by a cornfield is the perfect place to talk about our weed of the week because it's one of the tougher weeds to control in corn if you have it on your farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. Why do farmers chop their stalks at the end of the season. Well, when you look at a cornfield, and this one's a great example behind us, you see an awful lot of plants. In many cases, we're looking at 30 to 40,000 corn plants per acre, and those corn plants can also get eight or 10 feet tall. Now, this field behind us only got to be about eight feet tall, but you say only eight feet tall, and 30 or 40,000 of those plants in every acre, that's a lot of plant residue to deal with. And for farmers, they're thinking about not only just harvesting this year's crop, but they're thinking about what they're going to plant in that field next year. So from that standpoint, the residue has to be managed. So and when it comes to this managing residue, what farmers always used to do is lots and lots of tillage. In other words, they would stir up the soil, bring up that black dirt, and they would bury some of this residue down, and then over time it would break down. Well, anymore, farmers don't want to do that because number one, it costs a lot of money. Number two, it leads to more erosion issues. And farmers are trying to overall build the organic matter levels in their soil. So that's my third point is farmers want to build the organic matter levels and when they do tillage, they deplete the organic matter levels. So for those reasons, farmers don't want to do all that tillage. And what they found is that if they can break up these stalks into tiny little pieces and stalks, leaves, everything that's left after you take that ear of corn or those kernels of corn out of the field, you break it up into little pieces, it will deteriorate faster. The bacteria will break it down much more quickly. Now, you talked about building organic matter there, Bran, and organic matter in the soil is basically just decaying plant material. And for farmers, having more of that in the soil is good. It means a lot of good benefits for the soil, basically more nutrients in the soil, better water and nutrient holding capacity. So all those things are positives. But one other way, in addition to tillage that farmers used to deal with residue and still do to some degree in parts of the country, is they would actually bale up that plant residue on top of the ground. That was the only way they could really manage it, just get it out of there, then they'd be free to plant another crop. But when you take away all that plant residue, you're taking away all the nutrients that are in it as well. Now, in many cases, when they were taking away the plant residue, it would get fed to cattle or some other livestock. And in many cases, the manure would then get spread back in the field and bring those nutrients back. But for a lot of farmers these days, if they don't have livestock, bailing up the residue is just not an option because they want to keep that nutrition in the field. So again, what these farmers are doing, if they don't want to do major tillage to break down that residue, they're trying to chop this residue up. So back years ago, we used to run a stock chopper, we called it on our farm. So after the combine had run through, then we'd go through with this machine that would chop everything up really good. Well, now we've got got heads on our combines that will do the chopping for us. So before we ever even run anything over and smash it down and make it hard to deal with, we chop it all up. So it's great. We end up with a lot of these little pieces out there and they are going to break down much more quickly. What that means is a farmer can plant more easily in the spring. His ground is going to warm up more quickly in the spring. And also he's going to release those nutrients for hopefully his next crop. Well, one of the biggest things for us on our farm is we're looking at our corn planter running through that field. We need to be able to move this residue residue around. When the pieces are four to six inches long, now I've got these small pieces of residue that we can easily kick out of the way so we can have a nice black strip where we're going to plant. For many of the reasons well, wait, that Brian just mentioned. four to six inches long. So are you saying that's long or are you saying that's short? That's much shorter than dealing with uh, an eight foot tall plant. Yep, but and most of the time, if we can get it down to two or three inches even with these choppers on the corn heads, that 
that's even better. Well, the smaller the residue, the easier it is for us to push it to the side and allow us to plant at an even and consistent depth. And for corn farmers, that's really one of the keys to getting high yielding corn. But the other thing, if we move that residue over in between the rows, that can keep the weed pressure down there. It also provides a cushion for our tractors and other field equipment to drive over so we aren't packing on the ground as much. So there are just many benefits for having that residue out in the field. And also when we think about rainfall, you don't think of rainfall as being this violent event unless it's some terrible storm. But just those raindrops hitting the soil, if they hit bare soil, they're going to splatter and splash that soil out. And we could lead to more erosion that way too. Having the stalks on top of the ground really protect our soil and our soil structure, which is another good benefit of leaving residue in the field. Yep, so once again, farmers anymore are trying to reduce tillage overall to save money, to protect the soil, to uh, just build organic matter in that soil. It's difficult to do as a farmer if you don't chop up that residue. You want it chopped in small pieces so it can break down much more quickly. There's just more exposed so bacteria can get to it and hopefully in the future you have less residue to deal with. You end up with a better crop going forward. Well, corn stalks are something we want to leave in our fields, but our weed of the week is something we definitely want out of our fields. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready to extend soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready to extend soybeans. Extend your control. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pea. Most of your applied pea gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a Veil Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. A Veil makes more pea available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pea availability can lead to increased pea uptake in the plant. That's more pea, more pea, and more pea. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pea with a Veil. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. A proven herbicide for decades, dicamba can provide burn-down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. You know, Brian, we like talking about nutrients and fertilizer, but we yep. really don't talk about magnesium very much on the show. Well, it is one of the secondary nutrients. Yep, and the reason why we don't spend a lot of time talking about it is because in the type of clay that we have in a lot of the Midwest, it's called Montmorillonite clay, and one of the components of that clay is magnesium. So basically, we get all our fertility on the magnesium side for free. In fact, in many of our soils, having too much magnesium is really a problem for us. Yeah, we do have too much magnesium in some of our soils. The issue becomes magnesium is a very small molecule. Calcium, on the other hand, is a very large molecule. And so the way I always will explain this to people is, Think about if you were in a big room, and let's say you filled that room with basketballs. Are you still gonna be able to breathe? 
Well, sure you are, because there's plenty of pore space going through those basketballs. But if you filled a room floor to ceiling with sand and you're in there, are you gonna be able to breathe anymore? Nope, you're not, you're dead. And the same thing happens with your plant roots. When you have too much magnesium, you don't have enough pore space, you don't get oxygen through that soil. So anytime we look at soil tests and we see excess magnesium, that's usually a good indicator of poorly drained soils, not much air in the soil, poor root growth, and we're also going to have some problems with other nutrients being available, like potassium, for example. If you have too much magnesium, you oftentimes don't get the potassium you want into your plants. Well, it's all a balancing act out in the soil. Just like right now, Brian, we're trying to balance my volume level with all the cicadas in the trees that are making all kinds of noise. It's tough to compete with. But when we're thinking about out in the field, when you do have too much magnesium, you end up typically with a tight and sticky soil that's kind of difficult to get in. And I know in our area, a lot of guys will say, well, in that heavy ground, I absolutely have to do fall tillage. Otherwise, it's just so tough to get into that ground in the spring. Now, certainly putting in some drainage tile will help in those situations, but you know that is just a tough thing, Brian, when you have so much magnesium. How do you get rid of it? Because you can't do it over a short period of time. No, you can't, but you absolutely can lower the magnesium you have in your soil. What a lot of farmers will do is they will use gypsum. That's just calcium sulfate. And when you put the calcium sulfate into the soil with the excess magnesium, you're gonna end up with Epsom salts, basically magnesium sulfate is Epsom salts, and Epsom salts are leachable. So if you have good drainage, if you tile in that land, and you may have to tile close together, 15, 20 foot spacings possibly in very heavy magnesium land, over a long period of time, you can flush a bunch of that magnesium out by using gypsum. Well, that is one of the things. When you have tight, sticky soils like that, and as you were mentioning with magnesium, it's such a small molecule, there just isn't much pore space there, you aren't going to get that infiltration as well as you would in some other soils. So you aren't gonna get things percolating and moving through that soil quite as fast. So you are going to have to place tile lines closer together. And when you talk about putting out gypsum, we're not talking about a small amount of gypsum here because think about your soil. When we're talking about a six inch soil sample, we're talking two million pounds per acre of soil. So if you're going to try and change two million pounds that have way too much magnesium, you aren't going to do that with just 100 pounds of gypsum. And you're not going to do that overnight like we said already. So we talk about too much magnesium. How much is too much? Well, the thing is we don't want you to just look at your soil test at parts per million. What we want you to do is look at base saturation. What base saturation is, it's a ratio of five different nutrients, one to the other four. So with magnesium, what we're looking at here is we would like that to be 12 to 25 percent. If you're below 12 percent, you need to be adding magnesium most likely to your soil to maximize yield depending on the crop you're raising. And if you have above 25% magnesium, that tells us we've got a tight, poorly drained soil. You have too much magnesium out there. Now, one of the nutrients that goes in ratio with this magnesium, one of the nutrients that's also in this base saturation is calcium. So that's why a lot of people will talk about a calcium to magnesium ratio. I'm not so concerned about that. I'm just concerned about magnesium to all the other nutrients in the base saturation. But basically, if you put more calcium out in your soil, then percentage-wise, the amount of magnesium that's out there is going to go down. So that's the other thing you gain when you go to gypsum, which again is calcium sulfate. Well, and as you mentioned before, when you have magnesium soils and you put calcium sulfate on, that magnesium is going to displace the calcium and flush out of the soil, leaving you free calcium. So in effect, you're putting more calcium on and getting rid of some of that magnesium so you can get that ratio more in line. In base saturation, those five nutrients are going to add up to 100%. Calcium, we'd like to see at least 65% out of the 100. So if you've got way too much magnesium, I know for sure you have to have too little calcium out there because there's only so much in 100. So if you've got way more like 40% magnesium like we have on some of those heavy, heavy clays, all of a sudden you can't have any more than 60% calcium. So I know putting more calcium on is gonna be a positive. Yep, so once again, what we suggest you do with this magnesium thing is take a look at a base saturation test for your soil. If you're below 12% base saturation of magnesium, add some. If you're above 25%, you may consider doing some other things, whether it's putting gypsum out there or getting any calcium source out there. Also improving your drainage, that's going to help over time to reduce the effects of that excess magnesium. Improving the drainage can, over time, help you flush some of that excess magnesium out, especially when you get more sulfur in the soil. Again, magnesium and sulfur together will form Epsom salts, which are leachable and can move through your soil. Well, getting your nutrients in balance can also help you have a healthier crop, which in turn will help fight weeds like our Weed of the Week. Have you identified this week's weed?
Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. At Titan Machinery and Case IH, we offer better solutions for all your production needs. It's more than our job, it's who we are. We are parts. We are service. We are training. And most importantly, we are here for you. In any season, for every reason, we've got you covered. Case IH and Titan Machinery, better solutions. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, Agro Liquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear, for better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. For lower cost, higher production, see your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Ask about the best production-built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport to easy use. 12 to 85 foot widths, heavy-duty 4x8 3 8 inch tube frame, and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco Land Rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster, more uniform germination, less moisture loss, eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco Agri-Dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. Standing by a cornfield that's just about to be harvested and when we think about looking at these plants, some are completely dead brain, some are still green. What's yep. the difference? Well, we wanted to talk a little about plant health in corn. There are so many different factors that go into this, but let's start here. Fertility is number one. It probably always is going to be. We've got to have the right amounts of fertility out there, and we've got to have the right balance in the soil. So that's why a little earlier we were talking about magnesium. That's just one of the factors. Everybody likes to focus on N, P, and K, but you can't forget about magnesium and sulfur and the micronutrients. There are just so many things what we encourage you to do is do a good job this fall with soil sampling and then over the course of the winter if you want we can even look at some of your soil tests we do that for farmers all over the country just really getting into how you read that soil test how you make adjustments on your farm we have a couple of soils classes coming up this winter that we're doing just free ag phd soil classes so there are a whole bunch of things when it comes to fertility but that's just one portion of this plant health issue well it's no different brand than you and me if we ate junk food all day chances are our health would be poor and if we eat good food you just feel better and it's the same way for your plants you have to have the right nutrients out there you have to have them available and you have to have them at the right timing for that plant now the other thing once you do that all correctly you have to look at your plant once it's out of the ground we have to fight disease and insects all through throughout the year. As soon as we have bugs feeding on our plants, they leave open wounds and that's a spot where disease can get in. They also make our plants just overall weaker and less productive. So it's important to get those bugs under control and then of course disease. I don't know if anything's gotten more press over the last few years as kind of a silver bullet as using a fungicide out in crop production. Yeah but the thing is with some of these companies like let's take BSF for example they'll talk to you about Headline or Preax or one of their different fungicides they've got and yes controlling disease is a portion of it but in addition to that they talk to you about plant health, that there are additional things that are going on in the plant after you've used one of these fungicides. Now, there are different ways to look at this, whether you believe the plant health thing or not, doesn't make any difference. All we care about is, do we have better yield at the end of the year? Do we have better standability at the end of the year? That's what it's really all about. Even if you don't have the yield gain, if you do have better standability, 
maybe that's going to make a difference for you because you can combine faster. So those are the things we're looking at, but what is the plant health? What's their message exactly if it's not disease control? Well, when you think about that plant health message, they talk a lot about blocking ethylene production, and that's something that's big in the plant. They also talk about maybe some growth hormones that are being impacted at different levels inside the plant are being triggered. And, you know, I don't really care about all that stuff. It really doesn't matter to me. All I know is when I use these products on my crops, they stay greener and healthier longer into the season, and I'm getting higher yields. To me, when I see a plant that stays greener longer, that just says, hey, this is a healthy plant to me. It's not prematurely dying like we had seen for years in corn production. Well, that's great, except if you're in the northern part of the country and winter's coming and you need to harvest and your plant is still green. You know, that's just one of those things that you're gonna have to look at. I'm looking at more yield. That's what I want on my well, farm. I want that too, but we also have to be able to get that out of the field. So here's typically what I recommend to people. And again, it's not just spraying the fungicide is gonna give you greener stems in the fall. It's all these other things. If you're doing a better job of farming, controlling your weeds, having great fertility. You have less premature death, so you're going to have more green stems. All it means is you need to back off your maturities a little bit. Instead of planting a 95-day corn, maybe you need to plant a 92-day corn, something like that, just some slight adjustments. That could make the difference, and you still end up with more yield because all I know is the better you manage that crop, typically the more money you're going to make at the end of the year. Well, you certainly aren't going to make any money if you don't get our Weed of the Week under control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming always looks forward. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System, an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our Weed of the Week is broadleaf signal grass. Often misdiagnosed as large crabgrass, but when you look at the ligules on the plants, that's a real easy way to tell the difference. With broadleaf signal grass, it's got a hairy ligule, where with that large crabgrass, it's got a membranous ligule. So that would be one way to tell those two weeds apart. Broadleaf signal grass is a warm season, summer annual grass that comes up a little bit later and comes up throughout the growing season. That's what makes it such a challenge in crops like corn, where we can put a pre-emerge out and it's especially if we aren't using a full rate. Our residual just seems to run out of gas before that last flush of broadleaf signal grass comes and then we're in trouble. The other thing to keep in mind, this is a grass plant. It's not a broadleaf. Even though the word broadleaf is in the name, it's not a broadleaf. So you're not gonna get control out of any of the broadleaf herbicides. I mean, you might get a little bit out of Laudus or something like that, but no big deal. Post-emerge, Roundup is still pretty good. Liberty's not too bad if it's small. Otherwise, Accent is okay, again, if it's small. But again, use those pre-emerge products, your Dual, Harness, Surpass, Outlook, uh, all those grass control products at full labeled rates, that's gonna give you the best start. You're gonna take out the first flush, maybe even the second flush, depending on the year, and then you've gotta be watching out for that next flush that comes through. The other thing is just cultural practices. Planting your crop at a narrower row spacing, planting a little higher population, that can all help shade things out so you don't get broadleaf signal grass starting late. Now in wheat, another grass crop, here's where a grass weed can be a problem too. We like to start out with prepare. I use that depending on your soil pH at 0.2 to 0.3 ounces per acre. Then post-emerge come back with something like axial, typically, or if you want an ALS choice, you can use Everest 2.0. In soybeans, I would recommend Sonalan, but Treflan and Prowl are also pretty effective, and post-emerge, just about any grass killer will do it. And also, Pursuit and Raptor have a little bit of activity too, so if you're going after some broad leaves, that would be my choice. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned because Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. You just had some really great corn or wheat or whatever crop you raise. Now there's residue that you'd like to see gone by next year so it doesn't hurt your upcoming crop. 
We'll talk about residue breakdown in today's Iron Talk. For us, the biggest residue situation to deal with on our farm is corn stalks. For you, it may be different. There are two ways to approach the situation. First, you may consider heavy tillage. Whether it's a disc ripper like an Ecalo Tiger 870 or a chisel plow, you can size and bury a lot of residue in a hurry. There are certainly benefits to this process, like a warmer seed bed going into next spring, improved water infiltration, fast residue breakdown, and more. The downside is it doesn't fit all soils and all farm operations. For example, we have some highly erodible soils that require different management. This leads to the second choice, vertical tillage. Whether you use something like the True Tandem 330 Turbo or individual coulters like on a Salford machine, we've had good luck sizing corn stalks in situations where we didn't use a chopping corn head. We've also had success simply stirring up a little soil along with all the biological life in that soil and mixing it with the stalks. Just that little bit of tillage has really helped speed up the breakdown of residue and helped with flowability through our planter in the spring. Of course, you could add humates, manure, or commercial fertilizer to the residue in any tillage or no tillage program to speed things up. In the northern U.S., our experience has been that unless you can do this in late September or early October, we typically don't get enough heat to really get a significant amount of residue breakdown without some form of tillage. So what works best on your farm to achieve good breakdown of tough crop residues? Join in the discussion on agphd.com or find us on Twitter or Facebook. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. At Case IH, our equipment doesn't just meet the standards, it set them. With industry-leading SCR engine technology, Case IH gives you more power while still meeting tough emission standards. In fact, the Steiger 620 is the highest horsepower tractor to ever come off the assembly line. And all Case IH equipment is agronomically designed to help you maximize your yield potential and your profits. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Learn more at caseih.com slash efficient power. Wake up. Breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with Avail Phosphorus Fertilizer Enhancer. Avail makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can mean more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with Avail. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The all new S Cube Commercial Tender is the only tender on the market with poly tanks, giving you the capability to haul seed, fertilizer, water, or liquid fertilizer. Each cube can hold 300 units of seed, 2,000 gallons of liquid, or 300 cubic feet of fertilizer. Options include full functioning wireless remote, stainless steel conveyors, and self contained hydraulics. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and much more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. No one cares more for the environment than family farmers who plan to pass their land down to their children. These same farmers are working to double yields over the next 15 to 20 years to feed the growing world. To learn how they plan to do it, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.